Dental Cafe. I hope so. You all are safe and sound. Today I am going to discuss about the diagnostic and descriptive terminology related to oral lesion. Okay then, let's begin the video. One is MECQ. It is less than 1 cm in diameter. It may appear alone or in group as a red, blue, brown or black stain or spot. It is neither elevated nor depressed. Macule may pre, uh, represent a normal condition or a variant of normal or local or systemic disease. Look at the figure. This black shaded area represents macule which is non-raised area altered in color. In next figure you can see oral melanotic macule on the lip. Oral condition in which you can see macule is oral melanotic macule, ephelis, amalgam, Indian ink or pencil tattoos, focal ergyrosis. In all these conditions, you can see macule-like lesion. Next one is patch. It is larger than macule and differentiated from surrounding epidermis by color, texture or we can say both. Like the macule, patch is neither elevated nor depressed. Like in planus, mucus patch of secondary syphilis Snuff dippers patch represents patch like lesion. Look at the figure, you can see this black shaded area represents patch. It is pigmented area and it is larger than macule. Macule is a small black shaded area and it is larger than that of macule. In next figure, amalgam tattoo after retrograde amalgam filling. This amalgam tattoo shows patch. Oral condition which represents patch are lichen planus, mucus patch of secondary syphilis, snuff dippers patch. Next is erosion. It is clinical term that describes a soft tissue lesion in which skin or mucosa is denuded. That is the epithelium is worn away or destroyed. It is slightly depressed. In the eroded area, the epithelium is lost, however, the basal cell layer is preserved. And because of preserved basal cell layer, scarring is very rarely in erosion. Look at the figure. As you can see, the basal layer of epithelium is intact. So erosion is denudation above basal layer of epithelium. Oral condition in which you can see erosion is erosive lichen planus on palatal gingiva as you can see in the figure. Oral condition in which erosion is seen is pamphigus, discomitus gingivitis, erythema multiforme. Next one is ulcer. It is crater like lesion of oral mucosa. It is an uncovered wound of cutaneous or mucosal tissue that exhibits gradual tissue disintegration and necrosis. Ulcers are deeper than erosion, extended below the basal layer of epithelium into the dermis. It means in erosion, dermis or basal layer is not involved, but in ulcer, basal layer is involved. It means it is deeper than, than the erosion. Scaring may follow healing of an ulcer. Border of ulcer is round but can be irregular. Ulcers are usually painful and often require topical or systemic drug therapy. Look at the figure as you can see that it involves epithelium plus connective tissue. So ulcer is denudation below the basal layer of epithelium. In oral condition in which you can appreciate ulcer is traumatic ulcer on the lateral border of the tongue. Other condition in which ulcer is seen is aptheosystomatitis, infection by vi viruses such as herpes simplex, variola or smallpox, varicella juster or chickenpox and singles, cancer and in granulomatous diseases. Now move on to the next terminology that is wheel. 
it is a raised area of localized tissue swelling or edema it is a smooth surface papule or plaque results from acute extravasation of serum into the superficial dermis a veil is generally pale red pruritic and of short duration they are slightly raised and vary in size most commonly seen in person with allergies look at the figure this light pinkish uh, area represents veil veil is serum filled papule or plaque and it is generally pale red and slightly raised veil develops as a result of histamine release from mast cell or activation of complement cascades veil are a sign of an allergic reaction that develop shortly after insect bites consuming a particular food or a mechanical irritation now the next terminology is scar it is a permanent marks or a cicatrix remaining after a wound heal a scar is a visible sign of wound repair and indicates a previous disruption in the integrity of epidermis and dermis and healing of epithelium with fibrous tissue scar are infrequently found in the oral cavity because oral tissue is elastic and are less prone to scar formation than skin look at the figure as you can see that the light pinkish area represents scar it is a permanent mark after wound and in the next next figure you can see fibrotic tissue as a result of trauma histologically they are more dense than the adjacent epithelium lack sweat glands and have few blood vessels the color of an intraoral scar is usually lighter than that of the adjacent mucosa oral surgery burn or intraoral trauma may result in a scar next terminology is fissure it is a normal or abnormal linear cleft or furrow in the epidermis that affect the tongue lips and perioral tissue disease associated fissures result when pathogenic organism infect a fissure causing pain ulceration and inflammation the presence of a fissure can indicate a condition representing a variant of normal or disease as you can see in the figure that fissure is a linear crack in the epidermis in the next figure you can see a fissured tongue oral condition in which fissuring is seen is fissured tongue angular colitis exfoliative colitis fissured tongue is a normal variant and other two are the fissure associated with disease last terminology is sinus the term is used to describe an abnormal dilated tract channel or fistula that leads from a suppurative cavity cyst or abscess to the surface of the epidermis as you can see in the figure sinus is a recess cavity or a dilated tract and in the next figure you can see sinus tract exiting from non vital incisors the non vital tooth is identified by locating the tip of the gutta percha point adjacent to the non vital root apex an abscess tooth often produces a sinus tract that travels from the infected root apex to the clinically evident parulis which is the terminal end of the tract in clinical conditions gutta percha point can be deeply placed in the tract and a radiograph is taken as you can see in the figure gutta percha is placed in the tract and the radiograph is taken to identify the path of the tract radiograph is showing the gutta percha i hope this video is helpful for you for more such kind of video do like share and subscribe my youtube channel and hit the bell icon for the latest update thank you for watching